Post. Joining me now at Post Night, Alex Kantrowitz. He's the founder of Big Technology and a CNBC contributor. It's good to see you. Does see NVIDIA you. have anything to worry about here? I wouldn't be too worried. Remember, you have the big tech companies, including Amazon, Microsoft, you know, building their own silicon, and NVIDIA is still crushing right now. I think what Christina mentioned, the fact that developers look to NVIDIA software to both train and run these AI models just gives it an advantage that is very, very difficult to catch up to. So Intel can tell us all day long about how powerful its chips are. It doesn't have that software advantage that NVIDIA does. And that means AI developers are locked into the NVIDIA system uh, ecosystem, at least for the foreseeable future. Okay, two words, for now. For right? now. The question is, for how long? Because you do have, whether it's AMD, ARM, Intel, and all of these other players, Broadcom, who's a player, all of these other folks who want a piece of the action. And you have to believe they're going to spend whatever they have to spend to get it, and they probably will get some of it. The question is, how much, and when does it start to eat into whatever first mover advantage NVIDIA has? My personal take is it's going to be a while. Now, I speak with developers about this, and what they say is, there's a momentum to it, right? You've built on NVIDIA, you've trained on NVIDIA. So in order to get your developers to work on another system, the other system has to be orders of magnitude better in order to make that move. Because you're telling your developers, you're running this successfully. By the way, AI is the most important part of your business right now. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna now go to another system. So that has to be orders of magnitude better performance in order to merit the move. And it's, it's a for now, but for now could be a quite some time with NVIDIA. So you, you could look at the, the Google um, ARM announcement and say, okay, what does it mean for ARM? But it, I, would, I would make the argument that it, this is a more important day for, for Alphabet. Just given where the narrative has gone uh, around its AI ambitions over the last, I guess, year and how there have been some recent stumbles uh, of late, how should we assess where they are today? And by the way, I said this on the halftime report, if you look at the stock performances of both Alphabet and Microsoft over the last 12 months, they're identical. The, the narrative wouldn't have you believe that at all. Yeah, it's a great point. So I think both these things can be true, right? The narrative that Google is in trouble because their margins are going to be lower. And that's, by the way, them building out their own chip brings down the cost to run these models. That's actually a margin play. So that's actually pretty big for them. Um, but then again, the story of everything changing for Google's business, that's also true. We might see differences in search. Now they can ride some of this shakeup and actually make some moves in cloud, which they have been doing, right? They're actually gaining on Amazon and Microsoft. Mm -hmm. But it's a different world for Google so that you can have lower margins, but also new opportunities. And that's why we've seen the drawdown, the bad narrative, but also the come up. You think they were written off too early? Well, we've talked about it in the past. I always said with Google, you have to wait. This is a very big company. They're completely competent from a technical standpoint. Their culture was moving slow. So it was like, let's give it some time to see if they can right the ship. I'm not 100% confident that they're going to. There are still cultural issues within that company, but they're not. I mean, people who said they're, it's over for Google, you know, that was way too early. Now, even thinking about search, Bing hasn't really cut into Google's lead. We're more than a year and a half away from the introduction of ChatGPT mm. and, and the OpenAI partnership with Microsoft. So, so. How, how would you assess, let's switch to Amazon, which is trying to close at a, at a new high today. It may not get there at this moment. It's, it's now negative, but it's, it's right around that. How would you assess the job that Jassy, Andy Jassy, the CEO, has done, the hand that he was dealt, and the time it's taken him to turn the ship around? I mean, is that too, is it too much to say that they've, they've turned the ship around at this point? Can he declare victory at this point? Yeah, I think they've turned the ship around, but in a very particular way. And what that means is they've cleaned up some of the mess that Jeff Bezos left. Remember, Jeff Bezos just kind of wanted to do everything, so he's off in all these different directions, and not all of them were working. And then they overbuilt during the pandemic. And that second thing is really important because they had to pull back and figure out how to make this business work again they, in an they were era. Too bloated, right? Way too bloated. And basically planning. They had to plan for an era where everything moved to e-commerce in the way that it was during lockdowns, because if they didn't and it continued, they would be sunk. It obviously didn't happen that way. So they had to do this pullback, and they have. They've gotten costs under control. They seem to be narrowing their bets. But then the question is, Amazon's always been this always day one company, an experimental company, right? A company that will say, you're only as good as your next bet. And you're only as good as delivering to the market what it needs today. And Jassy narrowing focus is something the market wanted. And I do wonder whether they're going to lose that inventiveness and experimental nature that they had under Bezos, which doesn't seem like they have as much now under Jess. When people ask you what's going on with Apple, 
stock is at 169. It's obviously been the worst performer of the mega, mega caps, you know, Tesla notwithstanding. Um, what do you tell them? It's, it's a rough moment for that company. Now, they have been so good at building this device, the iPhone. Their culture hasn't exactly been ready for the next big thing. And you saw that with the car, right? It's not like they didn't put billions of dollars towards a self-driving car, but they didn't have the culture that could build it because they weren't flexible enough. Like a lot of these other companies, they have flexible culture for all their faults. If there's something new, they'll throw people at it and they'll be open. They have open cultures, not silos like Apple does. And they're, they're used to designing things that don't have this hardware timeline, even though Apple's got a very good uh, operating system with iOS. And I think you've seen that also with AI, right? They, they are behind on the next bets because they haven't been experimental enough, way too top down still. And that's what they need to change if they're going to play in the next era of computing.